Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Nehemiah, and we're going to continue our study here in verse 12. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we continue here in, ver in chapter 12, we're going to be looking at verses 27 to 43, and that deals with the dedication of the wall. They built the wall, and now they're going to dedicate it unto God. And you know, like, uh, like in, in verses 27 to 30, we're going to see the preparation of the celebration. It's the same with, with a, a wedding ceremony. There's usually a rehearsal before the actual wedding ceremony takes place. And that's going, kind of what's going to happen here, what you'll see here. So here in verses 27 to 30, word got around to the cities and to the villages around Jerusalem for the Levites and for the mu musicians and for the singers and the priests to come to Jerusalem for this dedication. It would be a festive time, but with all things, purification of the people and purification of the gates and the wall was necessary. They first, these priests and Levites first have to purify themselves before anything else. Defiled priests and defiled Levites would defile the rest of the city. No matter how much blood they would sprinkle upon the wall or upon different parts of the city, it would be defiled. Why? Because they were defiled. And you know, this is true also with us. We need, we need to live holy and pure lives or else everything we touch will be defiled by our sinful nature. Marriage, family, church, Sunday school, friendships, you name it. Whatever you're involved in in your life, if you're not living a pure life, then whatever you are involved in, whatever you touch, will be defiled because you're defiled. Without purity, all efforts are wood, hay, and stubble. And the result of our human effort, listen, we want things to be done by the Holy Spirit through us. We don't want things to be done by our own human effort. We want, we want God to work through us. We want God to be glorified in whatever we do. And in order for that to happen, we need to, we need to die to self and to let God do the work through us. Everything we touch, we should be able to write over it wholly unto the Lord. Dedicate all areas of your life to God. How can we expect those around us to live a holy life? If we're not living a holy life, what are new believers going to think of God? What are they going to think of this Christian life when they, when they, if they see you not living a holy life unto God? How's that going to affect them? No, we need to live holy lives, dedicated, set apart from this world. And that's what they're doing here. They're getting ready to dedicate the wall. They want to consecrate it unto God. But first, they have to be holy themselves. Now, verses 31 to 43. Let's read verse 31. And it says here, Then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall and appointed two great companies of them that gave thanks, whereof one went on the right hand upon the wall toward the dung gate. Now, from what's written here in this verse, it seems that both companies started at the valley gate. 
So this celebration seemed, remember, there's 12 gates around the city of Jerusalem. And it seems that where this celebration started was at the valley gate. Now remember, the valley gate was the place where Nehemiah began his journey of viewing the wall. Nehemiah leaves Babylon and comes to Jerusalem and he, he wants to view the wall. So he, <clears throat> he remember, he takes a, a, an, an animal and, and he rides it along the southern part of the city and up around the northern, the northeast part of this, the wall. And he's, and he's looking at the condition of the wall and he sees it's all broken down. So he turns around and he goes back and he sees what the, what the shape of the wall is in. Well, it seems that now that the wall is built, that they are, because of the mention of the dung gate, it seems that where they're starting is going to be at this valley gate. Nehemiah took one company of people and he headed north, up the west side of the city. Now Ezra took another company of the people and he went down south around the dung gate and up the east side of the city. So they're starting here and they're going, uh, 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 Nehemiah is going straight up north and around and uh, Ezra is going down and around. So, and they're going to, so they're going, they're going up and around like this and they're going to meet, they're going to meet up here at the top of the city. Their destination was to meet at the house of God, at the temple. Although the walls and the gates were being dedicated to God, yet the main focal point of this day's festivities was to celebrate at the temple and to give thanks unto God. Let's read verse 43 of chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 43. And it says here, also that day they offered great sacrifices and they rejoiced for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. You know, it would be like this, what, the, what they're doing here, dedicating the wall, celebrating the wall giving honor unto God. It's kind of like when a Christian family or a Christian person buys an, a, a, a house or they move into an apartment and they invite other Christian people over to their house or to their apartment and they want to dedicate it unto God. <laughs> I just bought a new house and I want to invite some the pastor and some some uh, people from the church over to the house to dedicate the house and to consecrate it unto God. And that's kind of what they're doing here. Praying and asking God's blessing in every room of the house and then finishing in the living room and giving thanks for giving thanks to God for all things. And that's kind of you go around to each bedroom, living room, bathroom, whatever, and <laughs> You dedicate it and consecrate it unto God. As, as this is, you want to give this unto God for his glory. And that's what they're doing in Jerusalem. The wall is built. And the Jews are back in their own land. And they have support from the Persian king to worship God according to the law of Moses. Now, this really is a reason for them to celebrate. They're back in Jerusalem. In Babylon, they weren't able to, to worship God however they wanted. They weren't able to set up a temple and start killing, uh, sacrificing sheep and goats and oxen. They weren't, they weren't allowed. But now they go back to Jerusalem. The king gives them everything they need. He said, go back. Now they, they weren't allowed to have their own king. No, but... They were able to go back and serve God and worship God. However, whatever God said in, in the Old Testament, in the law of Moses, however God said it, the king was for them. So now they're selling. And not only that, but 
God, God gave them provisions to go back. God allows them to go back. So not only is the king on their side, but God is on their side. So that, I mean, this is a reason to celebrate. And they, and they were all, this. even the Bible says, that even the children were celebrating unto God. Now, in verses 44 to 47, we're going to see verse 4. Let's read verse 44. And it says here, And at that time were some appointed over the chambers of the treasures uh, for the offerings for the first fruits and for the tithes to gather in, uh, into them out of the fields of the cities the portions of the law for the priests and Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priests and for the Levites that waited. Now, it says here, and at that time, and it seems, it also means on that day. So it's possible, it's very possible that the events of verses 44 to 47, what we're going to read now, took place on the very same day as the dedication and the celebration. So they went, they went upon the wall. Now, when I said they went upon the wall, it doesn't mean they went around the inside of the wall. No, no, they were up on top of the wall. Nehemiah takes his, his group of people and they start celebrating up. They're on top of the wall, walking along the wall all around the city until they get to where the temple is. And, and now, uh, so they're celebrating and they dedicate the wall. And it seems like after they dedicate the wall, now comes these verses on the same day. Now, it would only seem right that Nehemiah would further organize the people according to the law of Moses, while the people were excited and willing to serve God. So it's like, you know, while the people are excited and while they're, they're, they are, have a heart to serve God, then let's get people organized. Let's, let's get people in, in the right departments doing the right things. Now, let's read verse 47, and it says, And all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah gave the portions of the singers and the porters every day his portion, and they sanctified holy things unto the Levites, and the Levites sanctified them unto the children of Aaron. Now, both Zerubbabel and Nehemiah in their time of history were seen as somewhat heroes. The people in their time were willing to do whatever whatever uh, they required. And this was because that they could see that God had called them for their duty. The people in Jerusalem could see that God had raised up Zerubbabel to bring back the first captives to Jerusalem. God had raised up Ezra to come back, not come back, but to, to go to Jerusalem and to teach the law. And then 15 years later, God, God raised up Nehemiah in Babylon to go to Jerusalem and to build the wall. And these men were kind of like heroes in, in Jerusalem, in amongst the, the, uh, the Israelites there in the land. And so, and whatever they kind of asked for, they kind of got, but because they knew that that the people could see that God was working with them. God was on their side. God had raised them up for this job. The problem was that the time between the temple being built, which was approximately 516 BC, and the time of Ezra, which was 457 BC, the children of Israel in Jerusalem settled down. And they did not, they did not see to fulfill the law as when Zerubbabel was there. They lacked. There was a gap of time between the time they finished the temple and the time that Ezra uh, went to Z Jerusalem it was about 60 years. 
And in that time period, in that time period, the children of Israel uh, began to wander in their hearts away from the things of God. And this is what happens sometimes. Our wicked, sinful heart hates God and it hates anything about God. And it's going to tempt us to go the wrong way. So after they built the temple, you would think, okay, they're all back. They're on fire for God now. Everything's all right. Well, no, no, it wasn't. 60 years later, Ezra comes to teach the law and he's shocked. Ezra is absolutely shocked that the children of Israel had gone back to the same old sins that they were committing before the captivity, marrying marrying Gentile wives, women, and, and it was a mess. It was a mess. And, and Ezra saw it, and it was, it, it was a mess. This, this can be seen in Ezra chapter 9, where the children of Israel had got comfortable with the Gentiles and started intermarrying again with them. Now, before they went into captivity with Nebuchadnezzar, they married Gentile, they married Gentile women, and they also got into idolatry. But this time here, after the captivity, they married Gentile women, but they never went back into idolatry. And even to this day, the Jewish people, they they the Jewish, the nation, the Jewish nation has never gone back into idolatry. So God, in a sense, the captivity cured them of idolatry, but they still did. Uh, this is why this is why Ezra was 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 heartbroken when he came back because he could see that you know if they if if the children if the priests and the Levites and the leaders of the children of Israel are starting to intermarry again, then the next thing that the next domino that falls is idol worship. And that's that that's that's what took them into the captivity with Nebuchadnezzar in the first place. In Ezra chapter 10, a revival takes place in order to bring them back to the ways of God and his word. Remember, Zerubbabel went back, God raised up Zerubbabel to build the temple. God raised up Ezra to build up the people. And then God raised up in Nehemiah to build the wall. Now, in the rest of verse 47, the last part of verse 47, we see the people paying their tithes to the Levites. And the Levites paying their tithes, or the tithe of the tithe, that was just given to them to the priests. Well, the law of Moses told, the law of Moses said, God said through Moses that the people of Israel in the uh, 11 tribes were to bring the first fruits. They were to bring um, the corn and the wheat and the barley and the different things into the city and to dedicate it unto God to the temple. They, and they would give them to the Levites. And then the Levites, from what was brought in, the, that, was called, that was called the tithe. So the people would bring their tithe into, into Jerusalem and dedicate it, give it to the, to the priests there. I'm sorry, to, to the Levites. And then the Levites, from that tithe that was brought in, they would take a tithe of that tithe and give it to the, the priests. So th this is what's going on. E uh, Nehemiah here and Ezra, they're getting everything in order. They're having the people do everything now according to the way God said it in his word. They're, he's getting, they're being properly adjusted now. Their lifestyle is being properly adjusted to the law of Moses. And, and they're on the right track. But we're going to see what happens here in chapter 13 next lesson. All right. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.